Sierra Software Tutorials Digitizing Methods Part 1 In this video we will explore the tools for creating embroidery objects using geometric shapes and vector artwork images. Let's start by creating a blank design and adjusting our workspace. We will open the document map and the smart design. We will also adjust the visualization controls to show the stitch marks and the start and end of the design. Before starting, we will adjust the type of curves we are going to use, arcs or beziers. Curves based on circular arcs are more intuitive and easier to use, although a few more nodes may be required than in bezier curves. If we are starting to digitize, the recommendation is to use circular arc curves. On the other hand, if we are familiar with graphic software such as Corel or Illustrator, using bezier curves will be the most natural choice. From the Home Tool tab, we select System Settings and look under Create and Edit in the General group. Then, we select Arcs and disable the use of grips. The grips allow us to control the arc curves in a similar way to beziers. Enabling grips could be a transition between using circular arcs and beziers. Let's start creating some embroidery objects using geometric shapes as a digitizing method. We are going to create a line type object using a predefined shape, so we will use the path tool with running stitches in this case. We use smart design, select path with running stitches and adjust the basic properties if necessary. Then, we open the geometric shapes gallery, pick a shape, click and drag. Most shapes allow us to move, adjust the size, and rotate the shape before confirm and create the object. Dragging this handle, while holding the shift key pressed, allow us to change the horizontal size keeping the center of the shape in its place. Then, we open the context menu and confirm. We may also press enter instead. The system creates a closed path object with a contour that follows the selected geometric shape. One more, this time, using a path with zigzag. We will select an ellipse. Click and drag. Then adjust the vertical size, dragging this handle. Then the horizontal size, again, holding shift in this case. And confirm using the accept command in the context menu. This is the result. We could have chosen any of the available stitch types. The sequence would have been the same. Let's create an area object with fill pattern stitches. We select the tool and fill type from the smart gallery, check density value and select one of the available creative patterns. Open the Shapes Gallery, select this heart-shaped element, click and drag. When we release the mouse button, the system creates the object. No need to confirm because this shape does not allow adjustments. If we need to make adjustments, we select the Edit Object command. By default, the system automatically selects the last object we have created. Then, we can modify the size, the properties, and the geometric elements. For example, we can modify the direction line. We can use the smart design to quickly change the stitch type. For example, we change the stitch type of this object to programmable stitches, and select this one from the library. As in this case, sometimes we have several objects, one inside the other, and it may be difficult to select the one we need. 
Well, this trick will help. When we have the edit object command active, if we hold the shift key, all the objects in the workspace are dimmed. When we move the mouse over the objects, one of them is highlighted. If we click on that place, that object will be selected. Let's select the path with zigzag objects and change its stitch type to E. We can also change the object colors by assigning different needles to them. We will check how our design looks like using the simulation window. As we can see, we have created a simple design with just a few clicks. Let's add a zigzag outline to the heart-shaped area to give it a better finish. For area objects, the system allows us to assign a second fill type, not for the inside of the shape, but for the outline. For these objects, the border item appears in the tool tab. There, we can select a stitch type, the same that are available for path objects, to be applied to the border. Also, we can select a different color for the border stitches. The area and its border have the same contour, of course. So, if we modify the contour, both, the inner and border stitches, will be recalculated. Again, let's change the stitch type for the area, this time, selecting a plique type, and using a fabric more in line with the theme of the design. This is the final result of our example built using only geometric shapes. Let's create a new design and work with a vector artwork. Vector images contain lines and object areas with their own contours that we can use to avoid digitizing the shapes. We use the catalogs view. Select vector images. We are browsing the sample images installed with the product. Select this one and drag it into the workspace. First task, to adjust the image to the right size. We will use the block menu. To open it, just hover the mouse over this icon for a moment. Let's open the transform menu and select rescale. This tool works like this. We click and drag to extend a measurement reference. When we release the mouse button, this box will appear. Here we can enter a length value. When press OK, the system will scale the object so that the reference we have defined has the length we have entered. Vector images contain several objects and are loaded into the system as a group so that we can move and size them more easily. To use the objects that make up the image, we need to ungroup it. Right-click on the group in the document map and select Vector Ungroup. Now we can select each object individually. Now let's select threads that match the colors of the artwork. Select the Embroidery tool tab to display the thread palette and open the editor. Then pick threads from a commercial chart with colors similar to those of our image. We will need three different threads, orange, a green one, and a black one. Dot let's start with the orange region. Select the vector and click on uniform area with pattern in the smart gallery. The system creates the embroidery object and puts it in edit mode so we can modify its properties and geometry. Let's select a different pattern. And let's adjust the direction line. We have created an embroidery object, uniform area type with pattern stitches using the outline of a vector object from the image. Let's repeat the sequence for the green region. 
We set needle 2 as active. Select the vector. And click on uniform area with pattern. Again, let's change the pattern model. And adjust the direction of the stitches. We have already created a couple of objects from the elements of the vector image. Let's continue with the black regions. The first object of this color that we are going to create is hidden by the area we have just created. Then, for a few moments, we hide the embroidery objects. Select the vector. And show the embroidery objects again. Now, from the smart design, we select area, turning with zigzag. The system creates the object, assigning automatic directions according to the shape and type of stitch we have chosen. We can adjust the geometry of the object, adding for example a direction. We select the element from the Tools tab and define it with a couple of clicks. Let's repeat the procedure for the rest of the black regions. Select the vector object and then select area, turning with zigzag. Again, with this vector object. The sequence of object creation we are following is not deliberate. We are making a run through the design to have as few jumps as possible, keeping in mind that some objects must be on top of others. Anyway, we may create the objects in any sequence and then reorder them using the document map. Again, to use the vector below the orange area, we briefly hide the embroidery, select the vector and show the embroidery again. We have completed all the forms. Let's hide the artwork and view our design in the simulation. And open a simulation view. We have created a design from a vector image using the contours already defined in the image, and using some semi-automatic tools of the system to complete some elements, such as the directions. In the second part of this tutorial we will work with the digitizing tools prepared for pixel-based images. Thank you for watching.